All right then gang, so in this video I want to move on to our second component and that is going to be the button component. So again, same as before, whenever you start to use a new component, you can just type that component in the search bar in the documentation, click on it, and you're going to see a lot of examples using that component and how to implement them in the code. So right here, the first examples we see are contained buttons. And contained buttons are probably the most popular type of button and the button I use most in my applications when I use Material UI. UI, and they are buttons which have a background color like this and also a little drop shadow to bring it away from the page. So if we come down here, we can see the code for these is a button component and then the variant, much like we had variants before for the typography component, we also have them for button components and a lot of the components you're going to use in the future will also have this variant prop to change how we display that component. And in this case, it is a contained button. All right, so by default, this button is this grayish color right here with black text, but we can set the color of the background by using the color prop. And again, these are theme colors, not colors randomly plucked out from a hex generator or anything like that. They are theme colors. So in this case, primary is the blue one. And the good thing about material UI is that when we use a color as the background that is a bit darker, it automatically sets the text color to white to contrast that. That's pretty cool. We have a secondary one right here. We also have a disabled button, which is a faded out text like this, and it removes the drop shadow. And down here, we can see we also have an href attached to this, which you can do. You can apply hrefs to buttons as well. So that's one variant of the button. But if we scroll down, we can see other types of buttons as well. This is still contained, but we're using a disable elevation prop on this to take away the drop shadow. If we scroll down here, this is a text button. Now, these are the default types of buttons if we don't pass through a variant. You can see right here, there's no variant and we get a text button when we don't pass a variant. And that's just text. And when we hover over it, a very faint color. Again, we can set the color of these buttons by using the color prop. If we scroll down, we have outlined buttons, which are also pretty popular. I use these quite a lot as well. And these are buttons just with an outline of whatever color we set. And when we hover over them, we get a very faint color as well. So the variant for this is outlined like so. And there's also other examples if you scroll down, different sizes, also buttons with icons, which we are going to take a look at later on in the course as well. For now, though, let's try creating a couple of buttons in our code. OK, so like any component, the first thing we need to do is import that component. So let me open up the source code and grab this import statement right here. So we import button from material UI core button. So copy that and paste it right over here at the top of the file. We're still in create.js, by the way. And underneath the typography, let's do a few examples of buttons. So first of all, I'm just going to do a button like so with some text inside submit. And by the way, we can also apply the type and you can set that equal to type equals submit. So that is a submit button. now. All right. So if we now apply a color to this, and we'll set it equal to primary, for example. I'm going to save this and see what it looks like in the browser. So let's go over here and we can see this button. It's a text button with no fill in the background. But when we hover over it, we get that very light blue color in the background. So this is the default type of button, remember, without a variant. Now, if we were to set this to default, like here for the color, it's going to be black text and then kind of a gray background when we hover over it. But if you ever want to use the default color, we don't actually need to set the color. We can take that off and it's still going to be that default color. All right, so let's do another example. It's still going to be type is equal to submit. This time I'm going to say the color is equal to secondary, but also this time we'll change the variant like so. So we'll set that equal to outlined, for example. Save that and preview. And now we can see we get this outlined button right here. Awesome. Now, I also want to show you something called a button group. And to do that, we need to import one more thing. So I'm just going to copy this import from my repo and paste it right here. So a button group from material UI forward slash core forward slash button group like so. Now, a button group is basically a wrapper for several buttons that belong together. And then it styles them as though they are together. I'm going to show you what this looks like now. So we'll do a button group, first of all, 
and inside there we'll do a few different buttons. So the first one, and I'll just say one inside here. I'm going to duplicate this a couple of times and we'll say two right here and three right here. So if I save this now and preview, we can see now we get this thing right here where they're all bunched up together and that looks quite nice. So that's what a button group looks like. Now, if you want to apply styles to these buttons, we can do that on this one single button group component. So I could, for example, say call it here is secondary, like so, and save it. And if I preview that, it looks pretty good. Now, I could also apply a variant to this. So I could say variant and set that equal to contained and save it. And we get that different style of button. Looks pretty nice, right? So that's a button group. Now, what I'm going to do is comment all of this out and I'm going to create a button for our form. We don't have a form yet, but we will have later to create new notes. And this button is going to be to submit that form. So let me create this. OK, so the text is going to be submit. Now, the type of this is going to be a submit button. So let me do that. Type is equal to submit. And then after this, I'm going to say the color is secondary and then down here we'll say the variant is equal to contained like so so let's take a look at that save it and there we go that's our submit button and by the way we can remove the elevation by saying disable elevation like so save that and it takes away that drop shadow now i do want the drop shadow so i'm going to get rid of that all right so we have this button we can also apply on click events to the button so all i need to do is say up here on click set that equal to some kind of function so i'll do a function here which fires a console log that says you clicked me all right so if i save this now and preview i'm going to inspect this first of all if i can go to the console and click on this and you can see you clicked me awesome so there we go my friends that's buttons in a nutshell very very flexible uh, we will be working with them a fair amount later on as well including using icons inside the buttons i want to do one more thing in this tutorial and that's not to do with buttons that's just to kind of create a wrapper around all of our content and to do that i'm going to be using a container component so i'm just going to import it at the top first of all we can get rid of the button group because i'm not going to be using that but I will paste in this container right here. Now, a container is basically a wrapper that goes around your content and it applies some margin and padding to that content so that it's not going to be right flush against the edge of the browser. So I'm going to change this div right here into a container instead. And the closing div right here, container, save that and preview. And you can see the margin on the left. Cool, so that is pretty much it. In the next tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to use icons in Material UI.